So we were having a discussion over abstract class and interface. Can you see my screen whiteboard? Yes. Okay. And then we were discussing about interface. <clears throat> so for abstract class, we listed some points. Like what is an abstract class? Let me open that slide. That would be good. Like all the points are already there. Just need to find out where they are. Yeah. So an abstract class is a class that can be that can have abstract method plus concrete method. Now we have discussed what is an abstract method. What is a concrete method? Then we have discussed um, other feature like cannot be instantiated. We cannot create instance of an abstract class. Can have constructor and static method. Can have final methods, right? If we are declaring any method inside a class as abstract method, then this that class must be declared as an abstract class. If a class has any abstract method, then it must be declared as abstract class that we have discussed. And I think we have discussed uh, in, in code we have seen, like whenever we are adding an abstract method inside a class, then it says the class must be declared as an abstract class. And also I have told you like, uh, let me share that example as well, so that you can just recap what we done. So yeah, this was the class we were working on. Then I have shown you like, this is the demo class. And this class knows two wholesaler. This class doesn't really know what exactly going on behind books and stationery, right? So it depends like what object we are going to provide. Like then I have wrote one test class for this. And what we were doing, we were saying demo.print info w. And what exactly w is? It's a new retailer. Remember, guys? So we'll continue further from this point. Now we will be discussing about interface. So there are a few points to note down. What is an interface? An interface is also a type like we, we want to define a custom type. So what we say is generally like class, then we say class name, let's say product, right? Similarly, if we want to create an interface, what we need to do is we need to say interface and the name of the interface. Let's say my interface, for example. Okay, so this is how we can create an interface. What we need to do is we need to uh, use interface keyword followed by the name of the interface. Okay, now what is the use? So basically we can say whenever we want to achieve 100% abstraction, uh, if we go back with the class wholesaler, so you can see in this class, this is a concrete method, the books method. And the second method, which we have is stationary, which is an abstract method. So this class is basically providing partial abstraction, right? But when we say interface, interface is meant for 100% abstraction. Now, how? Because the reason is whenever we uh, create an interface, so what we can do with interface is all the methods that we are gonna write inside an interface would be abstract, first of all. So for example, uh, in which file I was working, Test, I believe. Yeah. So I want to create a interface. I'll say interface. 
let me take calculator calculator okay this is my interface i am creating if i write any method like this int add it takes two integer int i int j right i am writing like this and i am saying there is a body with this method let's say return a plus b so writing this is not applicable why because the method we are going to declare inside an interface is by default abstract in nature so you can see what error we are getting abstract method do not specify a body even we haven't write uh, even even we haven't wrote uh, abstract keyword but you can see we are getting this method by default is an abstract method now what we can do is we can say like this that means body won't be there with the method so by default if we write like this or even like this public abstract this so this is the same thing by default if we uh, declare a method inside an interface it would be public and it would be abstract why public and why abstract because the reason is interface is meant for 100% abstraction like you cannot write any implementation over here it should be somewhere in its child class getting my point so whenever we de declare a method inside an interface we can say the method by default would be public and abstract why public because we are not going to use this method inside this interface so it it might use somewhere else we cannot use or call this method here so that's why this is public okay now let me just comment it and move to the next so in this interface what i am taking is i am taking four method add or not just add let me keep it generic calculate okay i am saying it it is calculate now i am going to create a class 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 let's say addition implements class addition implements calculator so whenever we implement an interface the interface forces us to override all the method from the interface because all the method are abstract and if there is any abstract method then we need to override we have seen this in uh, in case of abstract class like if there is an abstract method then we need to provide body let's say i am not providing body here to this method this was abstract what we are getting is either declare your class as a abstract class or define you can see add an implemented method so there are two choice either make this abstract or implement that method yeah, means provide the body to the method okay now similarly if the method is abstract even we don't write like this the method is itself abstract you can see i am writing like this and what i am getting is type addition must implement the inherited abstract method but you can see i haven't wrote abstract but here you can see we are getting type addition must implement the inherited abstract method calculator means the method we have declared inside interface calculator is an abstract method that's why we are getting this okay let's implement it so what we want to do in this we want to calculate the sum i and j so this is implementation for addition class similarly 
let's say I have multiplication. Okay. In this, what I'll do is I'll say do multiplication. Okay. Now, if we want to use it, what we will be doing, let's say, uh, we will say we have a calculator. For this calculator, create an object of addition because interface is the similar thing. Like we cannot create object of this. If we try to do, we'll get compilation error. You can see here, cannot instantiate the type calculator. So what we can do is we can create object of its child. I'm taking addition as the child of calculator and I'm creating object for this. Now what I'm saying system dot out dot println we have C dot calculate. In this calculator interface you can see we have calculate method and what we are passing is let's say 10 and 20 and what we are getting is we are getting 30, like the sum, right? Now, if I say this is not addition, this is somewhere, uh, let's say multiplication. So what will happen in this case, it will give us the result from multiplication, right? Getting this. So what is the benefit of using it, this kind of structure? So let's say tomorrow you want to add one more functionality. So what you will do just, uh, you, you just need to create one another class and let's say this is for division. Okay. And in this, what you want to do is the division between these two numbers and just need to write this so we are getting zero because 10 divided by 20 is 0 0.5 that's why we are getting zero because when we divide an integer to an integer so result would be integer only now you can see we are getting five hello guys are you following Yes, Anuj. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So the benefit basically even, uh, okay, there, there might be some confusion, like I'm writing all the classes in same file, but in, in real time project, what will happen? We will have separate Java file for all this stuff, like division would, would be in a different file, multiplication would be in a different file, addition would be in a different file, right? Calculator would be in a different file. And this test might be somewhere else. Okay, now you have built the functionality for addition and multiplication. You did all the testing, right? And you make the code for production release or production ready code you have. Now, if you change something in this existing code, so you need to retest everything again. But if you are doing like this, we, you are adding an altogether new layer or new, I'll say, in parallel, you are making one more class, right? So existing two classes won't impacted. They will remain untouched. There won't be any impact like the code we are going to write in, in a different class. So we don't really need to retest these existing classes, right? And we can add a functionality on in the existing system and let's say tomorrow you want to add one more you can just go ahead and create one more for example uh, this is calculator we have uh, we can have an example of send message right um, let's say we have a service called
one second guys hmm. so let's consider one scenario you have a service service of notification or sms right so if you have, let's say you build a class notification and you say send notification so in this what you will be doing you will be writing the code here only and for example this this notification method is for sending a phone sms tomorrow you want to write a new functionality so what you will do is you will say like again this will be for email email notification and you will write the code like this so what will happen in this case like if you are going to build existing or you are going to change existing classes then you need to retest everything one more thing like when we say interface so what we basically define in interface we define uh, i'll say a standard the standard we made is calculate functionality would differ like for addition it would be i plus j multiplication it would be for i into j for division it would be i divided by j right so basically what what we are doing we are making a standard that standard need to be followed by all the classes that we are going to build okay we we are basically defining structure of our application with this or the functionality right similarly if we like we have a notification service for example so what we did what we will be doing we will make this as an interface and in this we will say send what message and let's say some attachment for example right so this is the standard we need to follow in every uh notification service we are going to build like some we we are going to build phone sms then we'll have a class phone sms which will be implementing to this notification and we'll have the send method similarly if we are going to build email notification then what we will be doing we'll create a class that will be implementing this and this will override this functionality send okay tomorrow you want to add one more you need to just add a class let's say push notification and you will override the send method over here and this class will implement this interface so whenever you say implement this so what what it says okay if you are implementing me you need to follow this standard that i made are you following guys any doubt in this uh, no one it's like a contract right you should implement contract. yes yes you can say contract okay okay so this is how we can write an interface so there are few points that that i need to um, that you just uh, need to write down somewhere like we have a few points about abstract class similarly we have few points about an interface so what is an interface interface is similarly similar to a class in this what we can have is we can have uh one more thing uh, that we need to add we can have constant in, inside an interface for example if i write like this int i so int i equals to 0 so what basically i am doing this is this will be treated as a constant and if you want to make sure like is it true or not so you can say like i is equals to this 
you will see what we are getting is one second guys hmm here we cannot initialize but yes here we can do that let me take this as x okay and here i'll say x is equals to 10 so x is basically inheriting from this class for interface and if we are going to change you cannot see you can see final field calculator x cannot be assigned means anything we write inside an interface uh, i mean uh, when whenever we want we want to define a variable inside an interface we won't be able like instance variable we cannot have inside an interface so this is basically a constant public final and static so this is the similar thing if we write like this only and if we write this this is same if we are not writing int uh, public final static it will be added by java by default if we are inside an interface so make sure we cannot make instance variable in an interface next point we cannot instantiate an interface all the methods inside an interface are by default abstract in nature if a class implements any interface then the class must implement all the method from the interface or needs to be declared as final let, let's say you are not writing this you don't want to uh, in, uh, override the method so what what you can do is you can leave this class as an abstract like this sorry this is not the right place uh, yeah we can now this is not complaining but when abstract is not there you can see this interface calculator is forcing us to override the unimplemented method okay now there might be a confusion like when to use abstract uh, abstract class and when to use interface first of all let me know one thing are you guys clear with the differences between interface and abstract class uh, yes but uh, one question i have in the abstraction, mm -hmm. we can declare instance variable, right? Yes. Oh. So there we can have abstract methods and uh, concrete methods. But here all methods are uh, abstract methods and all variables are final. Final and yes, constant we can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are the few differences between abstract class and interfaces that you told like in an interface we can have only abstract method but in an abstract class we can have abstract and concrete method as well we can have instance variable inside uh, abstract class but we cannot have instance variable inside an interface inside a, an abstract class we can have constructor but in interface we cannot right so these are the differences between these abstract class and interfaces now the question is how to choose between abstract class and interfaces so it depends based on our requirement so let let me take the same example we were discussing uh, let's say we have a class called retailer and wholesaler we have So let me first give you the requirement. We have retailer R1, we have retailer R2, right? In wholesaler, there is a functionality uh, books, and the second functionality is stationary.
now you will decide like when to whether i should make this wholesaler as an interface or an abstract class so for example uh, i'm saying this retailer one bought books and stationery from wholesaler what what he needs he needs books for fifth class and he need pens for stationery similarly this r2 needs books for uh, 10th class let's say and in stationery he needs paper okay so now i have given you a scenario which one you will choose uh r1 no no my question is these are my requirements r1 needs books of fifth class r1 needs stationery so in stationery specifically he need pens r2 needs books of 10th class and in stationery he specifically need papers and they bought this from here from wholesaler so what this wholesaler should be interface or abstract class it's interface why because in both the classes we need books and pens so mm -hmm. to implement the interface we should implement those books and stationery methods mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you By are right. Let over override the books and stationary method. Yes, yes, yes. You you are right. You are right. Let me uh, give more clarity on that. So in this case, you can see there is no similarity in the requirements. Like R two is looking for something different, which is not really needed here. Similarly, for stationary. right they need paper and he need pen so the requirement are totally different so what they can do is they can make this wholesaler as an interface and you know in an interface both the method will be abstract yes like then there won't be any definition both the class will implement books and pens accordingly and will write the logic for fifth class book and for pens similarly it will write the logic for 10th class book and for papers right because there is no common code in in these the standard is same like books and stationery but the requirement altogether is different now let's take one more scenario this is a wholesaler okay and in this they in this we have books and stationery okay now let me take r1 and r2 in books they need fifth class book they also need books of fifth class a stationery they need pen they need paper 
right so in this case you can see the requirement i'm giving here is similar right so instead of writing two definition or two similar code what we can do is we can move this code here in this so if we want to move this fifth class code the books method code inside this class what we need to do is we need to make this as a concrete method right we will implement the logic for fifth class books here in that case if a class contain concrete method what we need to do is we need to make the class as an abstract class right if it is an interface then we cannot add the body and for stationary they need different implementation so what we will be doing is we will say leave this abstract and leave the implementation to the child class what they want to do they will tell us here does it make sense guys or we need more clarity on this let me take an example in java okay that will make more clarity uh we have a wholesaler uh, let me take it an interface in this we have a method called books this is for example let's say void what is the issue we are getting already there is a type defined that's why we are getting an error so wholesale error is already there that was an abstract class okay then what we can do is for this demo yes i think we did this yesterday yeah so there is only one retailer now let me make it retailer 1 okay and let me just remove this confusing code for now we have another class called retailer Two, and they say papers. So in this example, you can see they both are inheriting the existing method, which is books, and which is basically for responsible providing fifth class book. But for stationary, what they want is they need pens and papers. That's why we have declared this as a and as an abstract class so that we can have common code here in the abstract class and the code we want to write is all together different we will make that code into an abstract method that's why we took this as an abstract method but now let's say our requirement is different here for books we need 10th class book and here we need 5th class book then there is no use of writing like this so what we can say is similarly we will have one more method which will be book or books sorry now
we need to override this method over here. And we'll write the implementation over here in this, like what you exactly want. So what we want is fifth class book, right? And in this retailer too, what we want is 10th class book. So in this case, you can see both the methods are abstract, right? We are not writing anything here. We are writing everything inside the implementation class. So in this case, making an interface would be a good idea. Okay. The benefit would be now what we need to do is if we are making an interface, we need to take implements. Any issue? Yes. What we are getting is see, I was saying whenever we declare a method inside an interface, by default, that is public. And you can see cannot reduce the visibility of inherited method from wholesaler. I told you this in overriding, like whenever we are going to override a method, we can extend the visibility, we cannot reduce. So you can see, I haven't wrote anything here. So default scope is default, but we cannot make public to default. Default to public is allowed. So what we need to do is we need to make it public. Getting my point? Same thing applicable for here. So from this discussion, we can say when we have requirement, which is basically different for all the implementation, then we need interface or we should go for interface. But if we have requirements, which is partially similar, then we should go for abstract class. Let me know guys, if you have any doubt in this, like if you have to make a decision between choosing interface and abstract class, how you will decide. Tell me guys quickly. Uh, for the interface, uh, suppose if we know the requirement and we don't mm -hmm. know what are the implementations we need in the future, in that case, we will go for interface. And if the in abstract class, we know some of the implementation for that requirement and uh, some are we don't know in that case we will go for abstract class correct exactly so whenever you don't have clarity on the requirements right and you want to make a contract or a standard you can just go with interface but when you have some information partially requirement you have you can go with abstract abstract class okay all right now the topic we are going to discuss is Um, object cloning will discuss later on. Okay, we can discuss this tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, or today itself. But there are there are two concepts. Like one, I'll uh, show you today itself, and one we will discuss later on. So, what do you you understand by object cloning? Any idea? Object cloning is a process of creating exactly same copy of an object. So how we can do that? Let's understand. Uh, we have a class employee and in this what we have is we have ID. Only ID we have, okay name 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 is coming from person okay so let's say we want to create 
a clone of this object in this class let me do one more thing uh, let me add two string method over here sources to string okay now let's go here i'm creating an object of employee 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 e1 is equals to new employee okay e1 dot e1 or just say when i'm saying employee or do we have constructor yes we have but this is the default one so let me set the values first e1 e1 dot set id which is let's say one e1 dot set name let's say a j y a j now if i say e1 so this is the content i am getting uh, id in this two string okay in this two string you can just see i have just printed id but what i need is i need name as well so let me just override it again refactor rename sorry sources generate two string yeah inherited methods we need to take all this stuff i don't really need i just need name i'm taking that only okay now let me just run it again so you can see i'm getting the name as well now what we want is we want to create a copy of this object so anybody has any idea like how to create a copy of this object quickly let me know yes anybody or uh, let me tell you like how to create an object or a copy of this object Uh, guys, wait for a moment. Uh, now we are going to create a copy of this object. So what we need to do is we need to make an object employee. E two is equals to E one dot clone. We are not getting clone method. One second. Why we are not getting? Because yes. let me just okay so clone method is basically available in object class let me just open that you can see this is here in in object class now when i am saying e1 dot clone so what i am getting is the method clone from type object is not visible so first what we need to do is we need to override that clone method where inside employee class okay how we will do that we will say here in this class um override clone we can write like this 
So this is the default implementation we have. This returns super dot clone, and what it returns? It returns an object. So let me just quickly run it, and we'll come back it, and we'll discuss this. Now what we are getting is cannot convert from object to employee. Yes, that I was uh, trying to explain. Like uh, when I I was saying we'll get an object, but what kind of object we are talking about right now? Employee object. So what we are supposed to get? Employee, right? So we can do downcasting. Like what we want is an employee object. So instead of like cast casting it here, what we will be doing here, we will be getting an object, and we want to convert that object into employee. So we we'll write like this. Okay. Now what is the problem? Yeah, unhandle exception type class. Sorry, type clone not supported exception. We haven't discussed uh, exceptions yet. So for now, just ignore it. I'm just saying add throws declaration. Okay, and you can see there is no compilation issue right now. When I have added clone not supported exception, why why we need to add this? Because the method we are looking it throws an exception. We'll discuss this uh, like tomorrow or day after tomorrow. So don't worry about it. Like what is this? Just Remember, uh, in object class, we have a method called clone, which is basically responsible for creating copy of an object. Now, if I go back and I say e1, sorry, not e1, e2 dot, e2 dot, or just e2. So it should display the same data, whatever we have in e. Even right, what we are getting is clone not supported exception. Native method employee Java twenty six means there is something wrong where in this method we need to do something here. What we need to do is we need to say implements cloneable. Now we can create clone of an of existing object. So basically, whenever you want to uh, make clone or copy of an object, what you need to do is you need to implement this cloneable interface. Otherwise, you will get this clone not supported exception. If we are not telling cloneable or not implementing cloneable, then then what we get will get is. Clone not supported exception. Let me show you again. Clone not supported exception we are getting. Okay. So this is how we can create copy of an object using clone method. And if we want to create copy using clone method, what we need to do is we need to implement cloneable interface. Okay. And we need to override clone method inside the class itself, like to, for which we want to create a clone or a copy object. So this is the one way we can create copy of an object. Other ways there, uh, like when we will be discussing about cello cop copy uh, in the topic of serialization, I'll discuss that later on. Okay, so this concept that we are discussing here is called Cello copy. Sorry, I told you wrong earlier. Uh, in serialization, we will be discussing about deep copy. So let's understand what cello copy is. Okay. So let me do one thing. Instead of taking employee now, what I am doing. I have one question. Uh, yes, tell me. Yeah, uh, in the clone method, you are returning super dot clone method, right? In the override method, clone override. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. we are uh, overriding the clone method from the object class. Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, that imp we are implementing the clonable interface, right? Right. So what what it is doing? 
uh, this clone method no here super dot clone is uh, overriding the clone method from the object class right no, no, no. we are overriding clone method from parent class and we are saying whatever is written inside parent class we need that definition only or that implementation only like there is some uh, logic written over there we want to use that logic getting my point for example if i say uh, let's say this is the void uh, let's say void method books okay and this is not this is this abstract class right and there is some default logic okay now what i am saying in this what i want is what are the logic we have in default i am implementing it but i want the default logic which is provided by parent super dot okay first i need to fix this uh, this would be extends now and then only we will be able to get the books so this is the same thing we are doing uh, what is the confusion in this so from the parent class we are uh, calling that clone method yes the reason for implementing because the method is not directly available outside the lang package right so that's why we need to pull out that method from parent class to in uh, in child class like when i was saying uh there is no clone method over here right so we were getting this error even dot clone because even has its parent as an object object class but the thing is the clone method is visible to only java dot lang package getting my point object class resides in java dot lang package but we are not in the lang package right now we are somewhere else so that's why it is saying if you want to call that method then first overwrite then you can use it make sense yeah okay okay so i was telling you something uh huh cello copy okay so let's discuss what is cello copy let's the employee here as it is or oh, let me just do one thing quickly i'm going to modify this employee class person is already there let it be as it is in this uh, we are going to add address okay employee yeah so let's assume employee has an address so what i am doing is association we have learned it in past yes or no yes private address address okay and i will make let me just remove this for now in this class count we don't really need for now mm -hmm. and we have private string name okay now i am saying create certain getters so just go to refactor sorry not refactor it's a uh, source then it getter setter now do one more thing generate parameterized constructor source constructor using field generate okay so this is the class we have all right and i think for this class we have everything yes
setter and getter and constructor we have. Now inside this employee class, we need to implement clone method, right? So we'll say implements clonable and we'll override the clone method. Let, let the implement, implementation as it is. We are not going to write anything. Okay, now in test class, I'm saying create an object of employee. So when we create employee, it takes address, ID and name. So I need to create first address object. So for that, what we can do is we can say address address is equals to create an object of address tell the pin city country state let's say job okay so i have created one object of address now ID I'm taking as one, two, three, and name I'm taking as Ajay. So this is my object E. For this, I want to create copy. Before copy, let me just print the information what we have in this employee object. So for that, what we need to do is we need to implement the two string method in employee class first. So that if we say system dot out dot print an object of employee class, we'll get the implementation, right? Now I'll say system dot out dot print an e. So for address, as we don't have two string method implemented in address class, we are getting this class name at the rate and some hex string that we have already discussed. Like there is a method called hash code in object class. And when we say two string from object class, so what we can get, let me show you again. Control O, two string. So it says, take the name of the class, append at the rate and append the hash code of the object in the form of hex string. Make sense guys? We don't want this implementation. What we want is we want the details we have in address class. So for this, we need to implement toasting method in uh, address class as well. Okay. Now you can see when we will be running this, instead of this, we will get detailed information of address. Getting this, Address is this, and the name was Aze, and this is the ID. Now let's do clone. So for creating a clone, what we need, we will say E1 is equals to E dot clone. But this clone method returns an object. We need to downcast. Downcast to employee. Okay. Now do one thing print this cloned object. So this is the similar thing that we have just discussed in, in earlier example. Now the concern that I gonna show you is after printing this, wait, 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 hold on. Keep your question on hold for two minutes. I'll come to that, okay? Now what I'm saying, E1 dot set or not, I'm not trying to set complete address, get address dot set city. I'm changing the city, uh, let's say. Rupnagar, okay. And again, I'm printing
E1 and E. Or let me just rename this. Let me make it cloned. This is the cloned one, and this 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 is basically the original one. Let me rename this as well. Okay. So sorry. So the implementation we have here is before and the second one is after. Now let me just run it. Now you can see I made changes in cloned object. Can you see it? Clone.getAddress.city. So I have just changed city in cloned object, but you can see the change is reflecting in original object as well. Can you see it? Can you see it, guys? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Now let's understand this. What is happening here? Okay. Then we'll come to the solution. Like, if we don't really want this, what we need to do? Now let's discuss it quickly. Okay. So. We have an object called original. And this is for employee. Okay. In this, we have name Ajay. ID we have is one, two, three. And what we have, we have a reference of address. Address is somewhere here, let's say. In this, we have pin one, two, three, four, five, six. Then Mohali. Then India. Then Punjab. Okay. So this is original object, right? When we say create a clone, so we get something like this. Cloned. And we got Ajay, one, two, three. And we got address, which is still pointing to the same object. Getting my point. For cloned object, we got employee object as the new, but address is getting reference the existing one, like both original and cloned are pointing to the same address object. If this is making some change, it will getting reflect in the original address. If this is making some change, it is getting reflected in the original address. So right now you can see, I said clone.getAddress.setCity and both are getting impacted. Let me just try to make this time original if both are pointing the same, then there is no difference between like if we are modifying uh, the current, oh, sorry, original or the cloned. Getting my point? So this is called cello copy. So in cello copy, what happens if a class has a reference or associated object for that? Separate copy will not be created when we are going to clone. Separate copy will be cloned for the main object. Main object, what I mean, employee. Address was the associated object, like address as an employee. Right? So here we can say the main object or the wrapper in which we have address is employee. So in cello copy, what happens? Referenced 
object copy doesn't get created both object clone and original will have the same reference okay so this is called cello copy there there will be a concept coming in few days that is called deep copy where both the object will have separate copy of original content or the wrapper and the associated object as well getting my point guys let me know if anybody has any doubt in this now you can ask question feel free guys you can ask question now i'm done hello uh not for me at the moment all right mamta yeah no questions i got it but someone is stopping me in between when i was in flow i am the only stopping you but after you said i got it this one i was able to ask about address uh address class okay i mean i have covered the your doubt yes okay fine fine then anybody else and has any other question uh okay like some some whenever i say is like hold on for a moment so you can do one thing you can note it note down your question there might be chance like you forget when i ask back okay okay so you you can just write down your question on somewhere notepad on or your system so that once i finish then you can ask okay so this was object cloning cello copy we have seen how to create a cello copy we will be discussing about deep copy once we will be discussing uh serialization okay Okay. Tomorrow we have class. Uh, let's connect tomorrow as well. Like there are lots of um, leaves I'm taking, so let's connect tomorrow as well. Okay. 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 Now we have to discuss next thing, which is downcasting with instance of operator. So let's understand that. instance of operator and downcast and for same timings the class is in same time yes yes it mm, tomorrow it the yeah tomorrow we can meet early a bit like 7:30 if you guys are fine yeah, i'm fine okay let's connect at 7:30 pm ist tomorrow okay all right guys okay okay, okay now yes. we are going okay. to discuss sorry sounds good all right all right thank you uh downcasting so down, what i mean by downcasting anybody has any idea uh, that means from higher to we are casting to lower level uh, correct we have an example of person person is an sorry employee is a person we can say employee is a person or let me take vehicle there might be three wheeler four wheeler 10 wheeler 18 wheeler right so i'm taking just an example of four and two 
sorry we can see eclipse only uh, okay let me just share whiteboard now uh, yes we can see whiteboard so this kind of uh, hierarchy we have for example uh, employee is a person or car is a two four wheeler four wheeler is a vehicle right so this kind of relationship we have now what downcasting says like you can say you have uh hmm. let me go back and take the same example like we have discussed the class demo in this there was a method called print info where we were passing wholesaler right so wholesaler can be a r1 can be r2 like hmm we want to call some specific functionality to these r1 and r2 similarly let's say there is a method we are going to define Uh, in car there is a x functionality in bike there is a y functionality for example there is some a a functionality or a method here with this car we have x functionality additional so for this car what we have a functionality x functionality or let's say there is some a1 functionality is there so a a1 a and x this car have three functionalities one is it's on from parent from grandparent similarly on from parent from grandparent okay i have one method void test and this test method take vehicle object vehicle v with this vehicle we can say v dot a1 we can only call a1 functionality right we cannot call four wheeler or car but in this vehicle it it might be a four wheeler it might be a car getting my point we want to make sure this vehicle is a four wheeler or a car first what we need to do is we need to check the type so to check the type what we can do is instance of operator we can use how let's say we have an object vehicle v is equals to new car okay we want to check if this v is car what we can do is v instance of car and it will say true then we want to cast this this v how we can cast we can say car c is equals to car c is equals to car and this v this is basically called downcasting downcasting is something uh, converting a type into its uh, what i would say is um, subtype like 
the original type was vehicle and we are converting this vehicle into car so converting a type it's into its subtype will be called as downcasting and we can downcast only if if there is a relation between those objects we cannot directly cast let me take example and show you guys okay so let me just share my screen here is my clips class vehicle we have class four wheeler we have that extends vehicle similarly we have one more class which is basically car and extends Four wheeler. Okay. Now let's assume there is a functionality called void m. It says vehicle. There is one more functionality called n. And there is one more functionality called M and let's say O. Okay, this is basically four wheeler, and this is basically car. Okay. Now we have a vehicle V is equals to new, let's say car. Okay. So using this car or V object, you can see we can just call M functionality. If I say O, we won't be able to do that. Okay, you can see we are getting compilation error. But what we want is we want to call O functionality. What first we need to do is we'll say convert this into car object like this, and then you can call the O functionality or The functionality that has been provided by my parent, you can call like this. Getting my point now. If you want to see, we can call n functionality because it's getting inherited from parent. C dot m functionality is there. We can call all these. Okay. So the thing I am doing here is called downcasting. But this downcasting may Harmful if we are doing it like without type checking. For example, this vehicle is or this object is not a car. There might be a chance because this is the code I am writing. But there might be a chance. There is a method. Let let me just take you that example like which comes into real time. Okay, there is some void m method in this class, which basically takes vehicle v. Okay. Now this test class, there is another class. Let's say class demo one, right? Which is basically calling m method from our test class. There might be a fair chance, like you are writing test class, other developer is writing demo class, right? So that's why I'm telling this example. This demo class wants to call this vehicle. So what they can do is they can say new car. There is no compilation error because car is a valid vehicle. What what is wrong? One second. Mm. It, it should be somewhere in in a method. Let me take some x method. 
void x right so demo is client client for this class like he is providing a valid vehicle car is also a valid vehicle because car extends four wheeler and four wheeler extends vehicle so yes car is a valid vehicle but if i say like this right i am saying like this let me take vehicle v1 hmm and what i am doing i am providing a car that can be easily converted into a car but what if i say four wheeler right and when i'll say uh car c is equals to mm, car is equals to new car or v like the object we are going to pass is a car but exactly the caller passed something else four wheeler in this step we'll get compilation for run time exception that is class cast exception let me show you okay so assume for example just assume i am calling this m method from here i can do that and what i am doing i am saying four wheeler okay and i am passing this v then finally what i want is c dot c dot let's say call up o functionality so in this case there will be an exception that is class cast exception because this this is a blind cast the object we are passing is sorry the cast we are doing here so when we say we are passing a vehicle and we want to convert that vehicle into a car but it was four wheeler it was not a car so this is creating a problem so what we can do is we can say if if the object we are going to provide which is v instance of car then convert this into car object and do the stuff so in this case we will not get any exception the program will find right and if you see like we are getting the we are going to land you can see we'll get the end printed over here okay now what if i say it's a car then it it must satisfy this condition instance of and we'll get car from this we can see c dot o is getting called right so this is how we can do down casting and this is the use of instance of so instance of is basically uh, to make safe type cast first we will check whether this particular object belong to this class or not if yes then yes we can cast otherwise we should not cast we will run class cast exception if we are doing unsafe casting make sense guys now i'm done feel free to ask questions all set hello uh, uh we will ask tomorrow about instance of anush okay fine fine guys fine all right then i am wrapping up it here all right okay.
Okay, thank you. All right, guys. Have a good day. Good night. Bye bye.